Hi, today I'm back at Goliath Falls. Noisy geese. Start again. Right, um, today I'm back at Goliath Falls. It's now autumn. So I came back here in July and I promised that I was going to come back um, when the leaves are turning and the beech trees, which I think this, this wood predominantly is, are looking really good now. There's, they're still quite green so we've got a, f a week or two left on these but there's some really nice um, yellows and oranges and golds and things in there at the moment. So. I think I'll get some great photographs this morning and uh, it should be quite good. So I've got here before sunrise, it's, it's about seven o'clock in the morning at the moment. And what I wanted to capture was some mist coming off the water. And it's quite a chilly day today. So I was hoping we we're gonna get some mist and I can see around here there's nothing, but over in the distance there's tiny patches. So what I'm gonna do, is go go along a bit further and see if I can get some some mist on the water and I think that would look great because there is a tree here that I really want to photograph but uh, it will, it's a messy background so I think it'd be better in the mist so that's hopefully what I'm going to get but uh, either way the colours are looking really good there's lots of lots of the leaves have already fallen um, but there's also a lot of green around, so it's uh, it's quite a difficult one to, uh, to judge of how it's going to be today. But uh, it looks absolutely lovely now, so I should get some really good photos. I've found my first composition now. We've got these lovely beech trees going all the way down here in a nice line, and we've got the path leading along them, and some of the branches are arching over the path. And what I quite like about this is one is the, the subtle light hitting those beech um, bark and the, um, on each trunk and it's, the light is just going around each one so you should be able to see each trunk with the light coming through um, so that should create a nice repeating pattern on the left hand side and then you've got the, the branches going over the top of the path and that is framing the image quite nicely. And then we've got a lovely um, path going through all the, the beautiful autumn leaves on the floor. But what I also like on this one is that on the left hand side, you've got all the, the orange colours of the, the beach that are the turning. But then on the right hand side, um, you see it slowly changes to green because you've got more things like holly. And I can't see very much at the moment, but I, I think those are they look like cob nuts or something like that. So they haven't turned yet. So, so you can see a bit of a change in the colour from the left to the right. Now what I wanted to do originally was just to try and get these beech trees in a line, but it didn't really work and I tried a vertical composition um, and I couldn't really find a good photograph of that. So I then put it into landscape, but then we've got this silver birch right down the bottom and it's just the one and to be honest, I don't really like that. It looks a bit of a mess. So I thought, to make a minimal part of that, rather than removing it in post-production, would be to start right on the left-hand side over here, and then do a panorama over to here, and then hopefully that should make that birch quite minimal in the scene, so it wouldn't be so obvious. So I think I've got that photograph now. I've got a 70 to 300 mil lens, and it's currently set at 135 mil. Um, so I don't want to zoom in too much because I'll lose the depth of field. So this is a good um, range to get some of the lovely roots on the trees down there and also some of the branches at the top there and i set it to f16 to give me a good depth of field from the front to the back because i'm using iso 100 um, which, to give the best grain the, the t speed that i got for that one is about 10 seconds so definitely need a tripod um, and the good thing about having a 10 second exposure is some of these leaves are moving so it gives some blur on some of the branches in the photograph so you can see a bit of movement um, in the image which looks, looks quite good 
And then finally, I've got the polarizing filter on the front of the lens here. And I've got that fully polarized and that should cut some of the glare out of these leaves um, so they, they're really vibrant. The last time I came to Goliatha Falls, I found this beautiful composition of the path. So what we've got, we've got the, the little waterfall going down here and the river goes alongside the path. And we've got these, that's a beach. Uh, so it's basically, we've got some beaches here. So we've got a couple of beech trees and it leads the path along there, but there's also another path this side. And down here, we've got this lovely little brook. Um, so that captured my eye. And to get all that in one photo, I took a panorama. And I think that it really worked well. What I'm doing is I'm focused on these lovely roots down here. So we should get these in the photograph. So I've tilted the, the camera down a bit to make more of an emphasis on these roots. And because the wide angle lenses opens out a lot more, the trees in the background won't be compressed as much, but they'll be spread out and they'll be made a lot smaller. The sun has just popped over the horizon now and it's, it's about half seven, so it's just risen. And the golden light is just hitting these trees. We've got some amazing side lighting on a lot of these trees here and some patches on the path here. So it looks absolutely stunning. On my wide angle photography video, I've got a new subscriber called William and he was asking me um, how to really make the most of super wide angle lenses. He's basically just starting in photography and he's got a 10 mil lens and it's on the crop sensor so that's probably equated to about 16 mil roughly um, on a full frame sensor and this is a full frame sensor camera and I've got a 16 mil on it so what I'm going to do now is explain how a wide angle lens especially a super wide angle lens um, can be used to really emphasize the foreground so a photograph that I just took was using a wide angle lens um, I think it was about 28 mil, 30 mil, something like that. So if I go to my super wide angle lens, which is the 16 mil, I really want to use that to emphasize these roots down here. By going a lot lower, going a lot closer to these roots, and then tilting the camera down, we're going to get about 75% of the photograph of just these roots and a tiny bit of the background so what that's going to do is really bring these roots to the foreground. However, I'm quite high up because in this particular instance, the roots lead up and I want to see a flow through these trees and into the background. So I'm thinking about the whole image as I'm taking this one and flow is very important. So you can see the path, which is the main focus of these leads um, into this, between these trees. So I could go lower but then that blocked it off. So in this instance, I'm not going to go very low and that will look superb. I found another lovely photograph. We've got these, these beech leaves and a couple of maples being backlit or pretty much side lit from the sun over there. But to me, they're being backlit. And you've got some lovely light on these mosses on this, this beach here. And we've got the, the water going through and it's framed by that branch. And as it pans around, we've got a lot of shadows in the water um, where these branches and rocks are, but the water is, is white at the moment because it's, it's quite rapid. We've got a lot of, a bit of a fall going off down there. So that will help to lift the shadows in that area. And then you've got these beautiful light backlit leaves in the background. So all together, I think that should add quite a bit of contrast in the image, but I think it's slightly too contrasty. So I've put a two stop neutral density graduated filter over these leaves in the background so that will darken the sky a bit so i can get some detail in these in these shadows to try and balance the photograph so to take that photograph i'm using a 50 mil lens um, i've got the two stop graduated neutral density filter cutting down the sky in the leaves and then i've got a polarizing filter to to cut the glare from this water and to cut the glare from those leaves a heron has just landed over there He's just flying off to get his lunch. So that is absolutely spectacular. There's some lovely birds out here. We've had some jays making a right squawk. And now we've seen that. So other than the 
the beautiful landscape. This is it's really great to be out here. There's no one around at the moment. It's about eight o'clock now, I think. Um, and I've just got the whole woodland to myself. It's perfect. I've decided to revisit the area that I was taking a photograph of that lovely beech tree. What I really wanted was that, that we're going to get some lovely atmospheric conditions and get some either mist or fog so I can really block out the, the trees in the background because they are quite messy from there and that's the best angle from that side of that tree. But unfortunately we didn't get that so again I'm going to come from this side and I took a photo last time in the last video of this this lovely branch down here it's got wedged in the rocks um, and all the water's flowing around it and we've got some really nice dappled light on that rock down there and the rock over there so looking out i think we've got some really great vista from this point i've tried in portrait to try and get really low in here we've got some autumn leaves all over the place here so that would look quite good but the sun at the moment is really bright and it's just coming through the trees. So it's hitting these rocks over there. Um, and this is one thing I was saying about earlier about when the light is flat and cloudy, if you've got soft light, then it's really good for either portraits or coming into woodland. Because if you've got big patchy highlights, so for example, over there, it's very dark. Over there, it's very bright and the latitude of the film can't cope with that so you can't get it all in one shot i really do hope you've enjoyed watching this video i've really enjoyed today um, it's such a beautiful wood this is and i've managed to get a lot of photographs the trees haven't quite turned yet so if you're quick enough you might be able to get a few more um, weeks of photographs unless you're watching this in the winter but um there's some really amazing opportunities here and I've had a great time so I really do hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe and click the notification bell and as ever please leave me a comment so thank you very much I'll see you next time